Hello, and welcome to Long Box Review, a comic book podcast. I'm your host, Eric, and I am here to uh, give you a, a special episode of the show. Uh, this is to commemorate Jack King Kirby's 100th birthday. Uh, Jack Kirby is the uh, prolific and uh, fantastic artist. Many people know his work from his uh, his collaborations with Stan Lee at Marvel Comics. Uh, he, of course, helped create Captain America with Joe Simon along with a bunch of other characters. And he also did uh, a bunch of work at DC Comics and other places over the years. Uh, he was born in uh, August... 20, on August 28th, 1917, and died in February of 1994. Uh, I'm not going to give you a, uh, a, uh, a long history of uh, Jack's um, time in comics, nor getting into the, the depth of his comic book contrib- contributions. Um, go listen to Comic Geek Speak, episode 1633, for uh, a spotlight, a part one of uh, of, of the spotlight that, that they did, and you can uh, find out a lot from uh, from that episode about Kirby's life and his career. Uh, what this episode is is about, and what I'm going to talk about, are my favorite Jack Kirby concepts, characters, and concepts, mostly characters, but. Uh, some some concepts thrown in as well. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Uh, I, I I will start off with saying that uh, Kirby is not. Uh, I was when I first started getting into comics, I didn't really know about Jack Kirby or any of his his comic book collaborations or creations. Um, in fact, when I first encountered his work, his art, uh, it was in. Uh, one of the DC digests that I had bought around 1980, I think it was. And I have to admit, I I wasn't, (laughs) this is going to sound heretical to a lot of people, but uh, I wasn't impressed. Um, I was never, and as, as, as I grew older and read more comics and, and saw more of Kirby's work, I, I have to admit, I was not a big Kirby fan. I, I just didn't care for his work. You know, I, I, I uh, really gravitated towards more realistic, quote unquote, comic book art. I'm thinking of George Perez uh, specifically. Um, it, it's it's only been in the last several years where I really came to appreciate what Kirby gave to the comic book world. Uh, you know, specifically to superheroes. Um, You know, he, he created a language uh, in comic books that wasn't there before. And many have been trying to emulate ever since. So, you know, I, I, I recognize his contributions. I recognize his greatness. Uh, I just didn't really care for his style. And like I said, though, in the last several years, I have come around (laughs) to really appreciating what I see on the page uh, that that Kirby offered. I found a um, a, a quote or a uh, yeah a quote here from uh, this is according to Wikipedia uh, from Brent Staples in a New York Times op-ed piece uh, written about Jack Kirby after his death. Kirby uh, Staples said, "Created a new grammar of storytelling and a cinematic style of motion." Once wooden characters cascaded from one frame to another, or even from page to page, threatening to fall right out of the book into the reader's lap. The force of punches thrown was visibly and explosively evident. Even at rest, a Kirby character pulsed with tension and energy in a way that makes movie versions of the same characters seem static by comparison. And I thought that was a pretty damn good uh, explanation or overview of the the contributions that Kirby made, his style, his panache. It's good stuff. Um, and, and I wanted to, you know, celebrate Jack Kirby's birthday here, uh, with this episode, like I said, by going over my favorite Kirby concepts, uh, I'll just talk about him real briefly. And, uh, then, you know, you can let me know what you think and what your favorites were. But to start off with, 
It's the world of Commandy. Not Commandy himself, but the world of Commandy. Um, uh, Commandy, uh, of course, was a, a creation of Kirby's at DC Comics. Uh, first appeared in Commandy issue number one in 1972. My introduction to Commandy himself and his world, I guess, was in Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, drawn by George Perez. <laughs> Interesting, the, the connections there. But it's, it's, I didn't read a lot of Commandy. Uh, I actually didn't really find the character all that compelling in Crisis. Uh, but I have been uh, reading a few things over the years. Most recently, the Commandy Challenge that DC is currently, as of, uh, as of August 2017, is putting out. And, uh, just the world of Commandy, the, the craziness that, that future, that possible future, uh, the great disaster happened and Commandy is the last boy on earth, but it's, it's all of the crazy planet of the apes type situation that we have. You know, we've got all these different talking animals and, and their personalities and the worlds in which they habit in which they inhabit, uh, that just stuff was just crazy fun. And it really makes me now want to go read a bunch more of Commandy, or at least, at least read it to get uh, more of that world. Next, I have uh, Clarion the Witch Boy, who first appeared in The Demon number seven, which I did not know until I started researching this. Uh, Clarion, I, I don't quite remember the first time I experienced that character in comics. Uh, I do recall, recall, however, that it was in Grant Morrison's Seven Soldiers of Victory uh, series back in 2005 that I read uh, that I really kind of uh, fell in love with the character. But I know that uh, that version of the character isn't quite um, what what Kirby put on the page. And And I have to admit, a lot of these... A lot of these characters that I'm going to talk about, um, that's the case. My introduction to them were through the lens of other people emulating Kirby to some degree or or trying a different take on the characters uh, that Kirby created, you know, for good or bad. Uh, I'm not making judgments as to whether those things are better than what Kirby did or Kirby stuff is lesser or better. It's just, this is how it is. This 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 was my experience. Uh, with these characters um, as I was reading comics. So anyway, Clarion the Witch Boy, I really like this this uh, this kid, the <laughs> this witch boy, uh, and his cat. Uh, I think it was Tickle, right? Was the name of the cat. Uh, anyway, like I said, I I think uh, I, I first uh, really glommed onto the character because of Grant Morrison's Seven Soldiers of Victory series. Uh, there was a, a really... A cool guest appearance in the Stephanie Brown Batgirl number 18, issue number 18 uh, that Clarion was in. It was a, uh, I think a Valentine's Day special type thing where Clarion was supposedly in love with Stephanie, if I remember correctly. But it was really the uh, his appearance in the Young Justice cartoon that solidified why, or I guess solidified the, the fact that I love, I love Clarion the Witch Boy. Uh, that portrayal was just really cool. He's, he's a mischievous, um, uh, potentially deadly foe of, of any superhero character or anyone else really for that matter. But, uh, yeah, I really like him and I, I, I uh, look forward to seeing more appearances by the Witch Boy. Uh, next up is Galactus. Of course, the big one, the big guy, literally the big guy. Of course, Galactus first appeared in Fantastic Four number 48, I believe. And I mean, come on. <laughs> Galactus, right? I mean, he's the devourer of worlds. He's this bombastic, larger than life, literally character uh, that uh, uh, appeared in the Fantastic Four comics and, and other series. I'm reading um, Galactus the Lifebringer, which is a, a, a trans, uh, or a, I was going to say transition, a uh, reinterpretation of, or a, a transformation, that's what I wanted to say, transformation of uh, this character um, where he's no longer, he no longer devours worlds, but he helps bring them back to life, which I thought was a really cool 
uh, like I said, transformation or progression of the character from from where he began. But man, you look at uh, you look at those old Fantastic Four issues where he first appeared, and and just the the stuff that goes along with Galactus. You know his his uh, his spaceship and and just just great stuff. I'm gonna talk about a little more of that that kind of stuff later. But uh, Galactus is always a lot of fun whenever he appears. I mentioned uh, uh, Demon issue number seven. Well, the demon character himself is is on my list next. Uh, he first appeared in the Demon number one, which I actually have in my collection. Uh, oh, along with Fantastic Four 49 and 50, I have those two uh, in better condition than the Demon number one. But anyway, the Demon number one, like I said, introduces the character uh, along with his, his uh, um, other identity, um, Jason Blood. But my first experience with with the demon and like i said uh i think i mentioned this earlier um jack kirby's art and storytelling was from a reprint of the demon number 1 in or at least a, a portion of it in um uh one of the dc digests and uh i think it was dc special blue ribbon digest number 5 it was the secret origins of superheroes that i i saw him in and um I remember when I read that, this is back back in 1980, like I said, uh, I, I just remember looking at, at the pages, those little teeny tiny digest pages, and uh, uh, going, this is really different from everything else. And I wasn't sure I liked it, but I, but I, but I, I, knew, I knew it was impressive. Uh, I just didn't realize until years later how, how so. And and the demon, again, just like Clary and the Witch Boy, the demon I have I have grown to love in other interpretations, other appearances, especially in the animated world of DC Comics. The next uh, character on my list is a relatively new one. It's the Sandman, the Garrett Sanford version uh, from Sandman number one from 1974. I think. I first encountered this character or a, a version of this character in uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman. I think it was issue number 12 where Hector Hall is took on the um, the role of Kirby's version of Sandman. Uh, and I, you know, with, with, with the, with the, with this character's brute and glob, I believe. And I, I just was struck by, how uh, this Sandman looked with that red and yellow um, costume, which actually, now that I think about it, that's the demon too. The demon wore the demon had yellow skin and wore this the red tights with the cape and the booties. <laughs> so uh, interesting, interesting parallels there. Uh, more recently, I think I read a something in uh, the Commandy Challenge. Commandy Challenge. Say that five times fast. The Commandy Challenge special. I think there was there was a reprint story in there, and I remember really liking that. I thought, out of everything that I've been reading of Kirby, the Sandman stuff is probably one of the more interesting things. It was really crazy, crazy stuff. I, so I so now I'm really interested in in, in reading more of uh, Kirby's Sandman. I did buy the uh, or did order. I haven't read it yet at the time of this recording, but I did order the uh, the DC Sandman special that they're putting out uh, this year, 2017, for you know Kirby's 100th birthday celebration. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Another red and yellow connection is the the next character on my list, Mister Miracle. I think I first saw Mr. Miracle on a DC Comics Presents cover. I think that was issue number 12. And I remember thinking, that's an interesting costume. The red and yellow and the green. Um, and, and, and more importantly, the, 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 the full head mask that covers Mr. Miracle's head, but <laughs> you still see his eyes, his nose, and his mouth very clearly, as if, as if he's not wearing a mask. So that was an interesting choice, very different, very striking. But then you also have the really cool um, uh, aspect of the character that he's he's an escape artist. Uh, he also uh, withstood the, the the rigors and trials of apocalypse, 
and still came out of it a pretty okay guy. <laughs> uh, and then, a lot, of course, along with Big Barda, his, uh, eventually his wife. I don't think they were married at first. Anyway, uh, Big Barda is, is another, Big Barda is another character that I really, really like, uh, of Kirby's. The other, uh, Kirby concept on this list is, uh, Kirby Crackle and, uh, the, the, the Kirby circuitry, um, in his designs. I mean, Kirby Crackle is, you know, famous, uh, among us comic book lovers. Uh, there's even a band named after the, uh, the, the concept of Kirby, Kirby Crackles. And, you know, and, but this is really just speaking to, you know, Kirby's dynamism in, in his art and, and his designs, which were just crazy fun. I, I love, I love the, you know, whenever you see Kirby Crackle in the background, just, you know, just, just, uh, shouts cosmic to you on the page and and then you have uh, all these designs, you know, with Galactus and the ships and uh, just uh, things on on uh, like New Gods costumes and mother boxes and stuff like that. Um, the the circuitry patterns and just it's just wacky, crazy cosmic fun, and I, I really love that stuff. And based on on what I read, again, this is just real real quick stuff that I read online. Uh, the origins of the Kirby, Kirby Crackle or Kirby Dots, as they're sometimes called, uh, was in like came around in, like 1965, 1966 time in Fantastic Four and and Thor comics. But uh, yeah, it's one of the things I, I really like about Kirby and what he what he provided to us. And then finally, on my list of favorite Kirby concepts, um, I, I just mentioned New Gods. Uh, uh, it's dark side or as I used to call him <laughs> dark seed. Uh, whenever I saw dark, uh, dark sides name printed, I, you know, in my head, I pronounced it dark seed until I, uh, watched the, um, the super friends, legendary, legendary superpower show from 1984. When, uh, I first heard it pronounced dark side. And uh, that took, I, I tell you what, that took me a while to, to get used to that, to, to, to flip my brain to, to call him Darkseid. Anyway, uh, let's see, um, just real quick, Darkseid had a cameo in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen number 134 in 1970. And then uh, he made his first full-fledged appearance in Forever People number 1, 1971. Again, these are these are things I pulled off Wikipedia, so I hope they're right. <laughs> uh, I mostly love Darkseid and came to know Darkseid from his appearance in the Legion Legion of Superheroes, the Great Darkness Saga, uh, in issues two ninety through two ninety four of the series from nineteen eighty two. And I already mentioned the Superpower Show, uh, Darkseid again. Um, much like Clarion, um, I really fell in love with the character because of his appearances in various animated series, including Superman the Animated Series uh, and the uh, the Justice League cartoons. Especially, I mean that that whole through line from Superman the Superman animated series episodes continues all the way through Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, and I just oh, I love that I those. Those episodes are just so fantastic. Anyway, you should you should go you should go watch those if you haven't. Um, it's a really cool story. And then uh, they uh, when the new Fifty Two launched, I, I thought and you know maybe maybe obvious to a lot of people and it kind of was to me too. But I loved that when they relaunched the DC Universe and the Justice League got together. Who was the big bad that they fought against? Dark Side. I thought that was a really cool change, a really cool addition to the Justice League mythos instead of being uh, Starro. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, but uh, yeah, I just you know, and not only was Darkseid the 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 antagonist for the Justice League on on uh, the New Fifty Two Earth, but he was also the the guy who basically destroyed earth 2 and 
actually uh, was responsible for the death of, we thought at first, Superman and then Batman and Wonder Woman. So, you know, he's not only a, uh, a force to be reckoned with in one universe, he was uh, almost Galactus-like in, in another one. So just a really cool concept. Uh, one of my favorite villains of all time, Darkseid. So that's all I have. Uh, it was it was just something I wanted to, to throw together out there to honor Jack Kirby's 100th birthday uh, and, and to say thank you for his contributions. And uh, like I said, go listen to uh, the Comic Geek Speak episode 1633 for, for their spotlight on his career and uh, learn a lot more about Kirby than, than I will ever be able to tell you. But, you know, like I said, this was just a quick list, my favorite things about Kirby, and I I hope you enjoyed that. And I would be very curious what uh, your favorite things about Kirby, uh, Kirby's contributions to comics were or are. Uh, And you can uh, let me know that by emailing me at longboxreview at gmail.com. You can also leave comments at the website longboxreview.com or uh, uh, message me at Twitter at Longbox Review. I would really appreciate the feedback and uh, happy birthday, Jack. <laughs>